Hey guys, it's Todd from Like-Minded Lunatics bringing you yet another drink place where, hey, it's all we do around here. I mean, besides obsessing over horror movie storytelling tropes, it's all we care to do. Round here, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to Drink Place Where, and welcome back to Like Minded Lunatics. You know that Like Minded Lunatics is not just me here at Drink Place Where. No, it's not just Toddy McWright. It's also Marky McGifford, bang, doing the Friday night videos. The co founder of Like Minded Lunatics, Mark, and my good buddy, bang, check out the Friday night videos. They're the best thing on the channel as far as I'm concerned. And Hey guys, at the time of recording this, we just hit 7,000 subscribers. So excited, but bang, I know we got more viewers than that. I've seen the analytics. Uh, please hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already so we can see how big this family of like-minded weirdos, degenerates, runaways, and zombies is getting. It gets bigger every day, and we're excited about that. Okay, so what do we do here at Drink Place Where? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. We play a game, usually a classic one. I pair it with a beverage and we tell stories. That's right, and around Halloween in the month of October, we tell spooky stories and we play uh, scary games. Uh, my beverage is equally scary today. I'm going like kind of Halloween party here today. I've got a solo, red solo cup, and it's a Bud Light Lime. Get yourself something, we're gonna play a game, we'll talk about it, and uh, we'll tell stories, right? Like we always do. Welcome back, kick back, have a nice time, and get yourself something, please. I'm not adverse to the Bud Light Lime, I'll be honest with you. What are we playing today? This is Ghoul Patrol. I have never played this. This October, I am playing all horror-themed games, but also games I've never played. And if you look, same creators as a game that I love very much, Zombies Ate My Neighbors, which I played on the channel last uh, Halloween, I believe. It's the same creators. Uh, looks like the same characters, principal characters to choose from. This is Ghoul Patrol. All right, ghouls, let's do it. Yeah, I'll be Zeke. Why not? Uh, I don't even know the buttons, but uh, let's get into the story and we'll see if this is a good game. Looks to be good. Uh, originally on the Super Nintendo, I'm playing it on the Switch. Okay, what do we want to get into in terms of the story today? Well, I want to talk horror movie tropes. That's right. I'm a storyteller, I love storytelling, and I love horror movies. So I thought we could go over three of my favorite horror movie tropes today. Uh, I promise it'll be fun. Let's go number one while the introduction of this look check out this uh, the uh, animation is pretty good here um, my, One of my favorite horror movie tropes is what we're gonna start with and that's horny teenager. That's right uh, In lots of especially in good 80s and 90s horror movies You had the horny teenager trope <laughs> and all we mean by trope is just like a, a sort of reoccurring theme That comes up again and again in a certain kind of storytelling Right, and so the horny teenager trump is, uh, 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 trope uh, is, is this: that um, there is a maniacal killer uh, out uh, trying to kill young people for some reason, and uh, it makes sense in Friday the Thirteenth, right? Because uh, he was uh, drowned in Crystal Lake uh, by teenagers, and so he's just like adverse to teenagers. But then you start seeing in other storytelling, like. Uh, Oh, uh, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street and Halloween and a bunch of others, the Scream franchise, that uh, maniacal killers just want to kill teenagers. Why? Well, it's like this reoccurring idea that uh, horror films and some sci science fiction are like morality tales, right? And they're trying to tell you like, uh, hey, don't be getting in bed uh, too young or you're going to get you're going to get killed. Because if you uh, look at these movies, right, and you think about, sorry, I'll skip to the game here. If you look at these movies, uh, you're usually introduced to like four couples at the beginning, four teenage couples at the beginning of a movie, right? And there is always like a a super horny couple. <laughs> what, what what are my buttons here? Okay, I got a, I got a shooter. This guy is obviously innocent, but I, I wanna see if I can kill him. And then is there a jump? Okay, there's a jump. All right, it's a key system. And it looks like uh, zombies ate my neighbors in that I'm trying to uh, save people. They're, they're calling out to me. Okay. Uh, let me get going in, in the story, and then we'll figure out the game. So, usually there's four uh, 
couples in a, in a group at the beginning. And there's always like one super horny couple that are not the two main characters, right? And particularly the guy is like a real dirtbag, isn't he? And he's like a real handsy and he's always like saying inappropriate stuff about his girlfriend in front of everybody. And uh, she's not much better, but she's definitely not as bad as him, right? Well, they sneak off and obviously they're gonna be the first ones to get murdered. And then slowly over the course of the movie, the other couples are murdered and we eventually, usually, get to Final Girl, right? And if you're not familiar with that uh, storytelling uh, narrative concept, it's that usually in movies like this, there is uh, only one of the teenagers left. It's often uh, a woman, and it's the woman who has the highest moral character, right? Uh, you see this in, oh look, I'm gonna save a dude. Nice. Uh, usually it's like, you know, like an alien Sigourney Weaver. Uh, you've got, um, that happens in Halloween uh, with Jamie Lee Curtis's character. It happens, it's in a ton of movies, but uh, Last Girl is almost always uh, the, the highest morally, yeah? And uh, she usually kills the bad guy at the end and, uh, you know, saves the world from uh, the monster who was killing the horny teenagers. Uh, good times had by all. Excuse me, except those who were murdered. <laughs> all right, next on the list of my favorite horror movie tropes. I'm a slob today, do you see? If you've got a 4K TV, you're seeing me like drip uh, my gross uh, beer on my chin. Um, you didn't need to know about that, did you? So um, next is the jump scare. I mean, the jump scare is probably the reason why most of us watch scary movies, isn't it? Especially when you're young and you're like, yeah, I'm trying to save this guy. Yeah, 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 there we go. There's still eight victims left around here and I gotta find them. The jump scare is why, when you're when you're a young person, why you're going to these horror movies, isn't it? Because you're gonna go to the, to the date, at, you know, on the date with this man or this woman, and uh, you don't know each other too well yet. But see, a scary movie is an opportunity to kind of sit next to each other, whether you're in the theater or you or, or you're watching Netflix on the sofa, right? Um, but now you're watching and there's a scary moment. And it's a sort of a chance for intimacy because don't they grab your arm? Don't they grab your arm when they're scared and they want you to be their protector and everything? This is a wonderful moment early in a relationship to watch a scary movie together. Now, if you're not familiar with the narrative of the jump scare, let me talk to you about how it typically goes in the movie. All right. Let's give a hypothetical. Let's say that in the movie, there's a young couple and they're on a drive. Let's say they're on a drive in their car, but they're driving somewhere they're not familiar with. They're going a place they've never been to before. And it's raining outside, isn't it? There's always a storm. And uh, it's unsafe to be out there. And uh, maybe even the woman uh, says as, as much uh, to the guy, you know, boy, we really should head on home. No, we're fine, honey. You know what I mean? Don't worry, you worry so much. You gals are always worrying about something, aren't you? And uh, then uh, something terrible happens. A flat tire maybe, or uh, you know, the car just stalls out and does the clunky sound that every car does in movies. Um, whatever the case may be, uh, the car breaks down. Now you see, they have to, oh, there's no cell service. If this is a modern story, all of a sudden there's no cell service, right? Well, didn't they just pass a house a half mile back and wouldn't it make sense for them in the rain to walk to this house to get help? So that's what they do, right? And uh, the guy's maybe a gentleman, he takes his coat off and puts it over his uh, girl's uh, head so her hair doesn't get wet. Because for some reason, that's the worst thing that could happen is her hair gets wet. Anyway. And they walk up this hill towards this, what? M uh, a, a mansion or castle or estate. Really nice house. It's always a really nice house. And they get there and they knock. Well, maybe no one answers, but maybe when they knock, like it swings open somehow, right? Oh. And they walk in. Now they walk in and they're wandering around the house. Hello, the, the guy's saying. No one's, no one's uh, talking. No one's there. Well, they're looking for a phone. They can't find one. And then maybe for some reason, uh, the woman says like, gosh, I'm feeling a little dizzy, you know, a little woozy or whatever. And we haven't eaten in so long. All right. So they go to the kitchen and there's a refrigerator. Yeah. 
They open the refrigerator, and in the foreground are the two teenage characters looking through the fridge because they're hungry, they're wet, they're cold, and their car's broken down. And you see the open door to the fridge is in the background. The music starts to swell, and you can tell something scary is going to happen. But before you get the jump scare, what do you get? You get the false jump scare, don't you? That's right. They get whatever food they're going to have. She starts nibbling. They close the door, and it goes, Banam! Nothing there. Oh, the audience is relieved. Then they come around the corner, and swiftly, you get another jump scare, only it's like uh, another false. Uh, maybe a black cat runs by real quick. Oh, startles them. Yeah? <laughs> now they laugh even, they giggle a little bit. Oh boy, I was really scared. We should get out of here. And that's when the real jump scare happens. Chainsaw wielding murderer jumps out from behind the corner. Uh, horrifying, thrilling music, uh, bloody massacre, and opening titles. Man, I love a jump scare. Don't you? All right, last one. Last one uh, that I want to get to today is the horrible reveal. That's right, oftentimes in horror movies or in a good science fiction, you get a terrible reveal at the end of the movie. Uh, this is usually when a character has gone their whole lives thinking that, the, uh, that their lives is a certain way, uh, that the nature of life is a certain way, but then they are told something terrible. And see, that's what's wonderful about scary movies is that we often want, like, um, our movies, like, a, well, a romantic comedy or an action movie or something, we want there to be a happy ending, don't we? But see, horror and good science fiction allows for the horrible reveal, the terrible ending, where the character learns something about the world or about themselves that they never knew. Sometimes they discover from the mad scientist that their life has never been real, that they are in fact a brain in a jar, right? That none of their experiences and none of their relationships are real. They are all just manipulations uh, electronically from some scientist somewhere. Or sometimes they learn that there are aliens among them, that these aliens have been in their lives all their life but have been disguised as humans, and the aliens are slowly taking over. Or maybe they realize that their boss, this man, this charming man that they've come to respect and like very much is actually their father, and maybe also the devil. And that the main character realizes that he's the heir apparent to be the next Satan, or at least Satan's right-hand man. Horror movies and science fiction have this wonderful quality of letting us sit in terror for fun. It's a wonderful time of year if you're into that kind of thing, because sometimes you realize something in the end of these movies, uh, this terrible reveal that you never knew. You thought you could trust something about existence. You thought you could trust something about your life. Like maybe you think you know someone. Remember, you know, like a character will think they know someone, like their best friend or someone they trust. And then it comes to be that that person doesn't really exist at all. That they were a figment of the character's imagination. And that's the terrible reveal. That someone you thought you've known for a very long time and that you trusted and that you like to spend time with maybe isn't real at all. 